made the playoffs that didn't make it the previous year. So you're not assured of going back year after year. The final playoff push is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. There's Carson Wentz bringing out the Philadelphia Eagles. 21 touchdown passes, just seven interceptions for him last year until a back injury knocked him out in week 14. Wentz now on first down, escaping the pressure right. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Quadre Diggs. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. You think back to all the interceptions he threw last week. Here we go. First play of the game, another pick. And you know that all week long, they spent time breaking down exactly why he threw the interceptions. Was it mechanics? Bad reads? Not enough study? Sometimes you just think about it way too much, and that leads you to the next one. Time to refocus. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. This is Chris Carson, 1,000-yard rusher a year ago. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And he's going to go down. They get to it back at the 40. Fletcher Cox in there to get him. Sack number 14 for him on the year. You never want to give up a sack. And from the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride. And they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And, you know, certainly a lot of football left to be played. We're not into December yet, but... Right now where we stand, they're first place in their division, looking good, looking to be a threat come January. And let's think about what every team has in their goals, right? Number one goal is what? Make the playoffs. Number two goal is win your division. Number three goal, and the biggest goal, I think, is to be the highest seed possible that you can be heading into the playoffs so that you can drive as many home games as possible to try and get you to the Super Bowl. And right now fighting for everyone possible to try to at least secure home field for the wild card and or divisional round. Points now to throw. Good win, able to hold. He's going to have the first down at about the 38. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So with that high power, you've got to find a way to hold him under 20. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. A few issues here on the offensive line, apparently. He got sacked five times last week. They got to him here in the first quarter. And I would think that running the ball would be paramount here because it's a different team they're facing, but they watch the film as well. So that's it. Now Clement fumbles the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. On the delay, here's Carson. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. Man, and all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. Here's a guy on his fourth franchise in two years, Carlos Hyde. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Goal line offense, something they've really been emphasizing in practice lately. Now they have a chance here to put all that hard. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. On any first.
Harris in goal. The real estate to work with for the offense is really cut down, and the defense knows it. So they often bring heat and pressure, which they did on this play. Got him down for a loss. Not a big one, but any loss of yardage in this position is tough for an offense. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. They were held to a field goal on their first drive. They want six now, but it's third and goal from the shotgun. Wilson. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. It's up how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between let them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So scores on their first two possessions, but 6 nothing. so field goal is probably not what they were hoping for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now, but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. Wins now on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field. We can go make a play on the football. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. So the youngster able to use the legs to pick up the first. And one of my pet peeves when they see this guy play, when Carson Wentz takes off running the football, I always hear people go, oh, he's sneaky athletic. No, he's athletic. Watch him do it. He's an integral part of the quarterback run game, and he gets it done very, very well. Yeah, you don't like sneaky athletic, do you? That's no, just kind not, of a jab in the back. Yeah, not when it doesn't apply. I think that's a stereotype that needs to be broken down for him. They well, try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. They'll try and run here with Clement. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. Boston Scott, his first carry. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. On the carry, this is Scott. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. He'll get just a yard on the scramble in second down. He'd had some success as a runner previously on this drive, just not as much space there that time. Yeah, this time when he pulled it down, they were ready for him, so things have to fling a few in order to open up that running lane again. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, Bobby Wagner, able to get back in coverage and knock it free. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Oh, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find one to get you to the end to get you six? Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. He brings the kickoff back 85 yards. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. 
I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam, and he got a full head of steam there. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him off because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. He's got a rifle one deep left side. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Wentz leads with Clement on the draw. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Shotgun now for Wentz. That's complete to a speedy wide left Goodwin. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. On first and 10, it's Clement. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Corey Clement, his third touchdown now on the year. As they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here we go. Here we go. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. It's been an awfully slow start for them. This is their third possession. They don't have a first down yet. That means they have to change up what they're doing. And for some teams, it's a change in tempo, usually moving into more up-tempo type of an offense just to try and change their fortunes right now. What they've been doing so far isn't working. Maybe they'll do that. On second and seven, Wilson over the middle, and it's incomplete. It was Jalen Mills getting a hand in there defensively. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, it's Wilson. Dorsett's got it. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. What we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. Things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. Come on now. Come on now. On second down, Clement. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Now Wentz on third down. Deep ball for Goodwin. And the throw there going to be incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, 
No flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and ten. There's Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And this is caught. It's Greg Olson. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll run on first down. It's Carson. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. That's about what you would expect since they're so efficient on picking up third downs in the top five in the NFL. It's all a mindset, and I guarantee you, it started in the offseason. Third down's important to them. They find a way to pick them up in a very good clip. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. The rookie DK Metcalf, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. On second down, high. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Back to back stops, make it third and ten. On third down, Wilson letting one go deep for the end zone. Now he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Tyler Lockett, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually... Wilson's pass, complete to Tyler Lockett. Touchdown, Seattle. Jason Myers for the extra point. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Myers connects on the PAT, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive goes eight plays, and it all culminates with a Seattle score. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a play fake here on first down. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I'd file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case... In the right spot, of course, the incompletion. Well, he had his hands, and that's caught inside the 35. The first down and then some, 36 yards. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Oh, he didn't spike it, he faked it. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. And between the last two plays, they moved it over half the length of the football field. 
Wentz now just 6 of 15 through the air. Not good, but first and 10 here. To throw is Wentz. And oh, it'll be intercepted. It's Quentin Dunbar with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Now second and seven from the 23. Now it's Wilson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Wilson now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. To throw is Wilson. Greg Olson was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. From the gun, a give to Hyde. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Back-to-back -back stops, make it third and ten. Wilson now on third down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Well-timed effort by Darius Slay, a sack on the corner blitz. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. This is brought in at the 21. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. All right, time for us now to discuss Alshon Jeffrey. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up and maybe here in the second quarter. On second down now, Clement. The Eagles on third down. They've hit at 50%, 3 of 6 to this point. This time it's third and 3. Wentz going to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. A strong 8 yards will keep this drive rolling. Wentz now has hit on just 7 of 17 passes, 41%. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. To throw, it's Wentz. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Wentz defers to Clement. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side but for lost yarding. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Now on fourth down, they throw the deep ball, but it winds up to be incomplete. A surprising move to go for it, predictably, at least somewhat predictably. It doesn't pay off, and the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. Now Wilson trying to lay one up deep, and that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. 
They'll give to Hyde out of the gun. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. He finds his running back, Hyde. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball, because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Come on, baby. On the ground, it's Clement to start the drive. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. On second down, Clement. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. On first down, Clement. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. He finds his way into the secondary again on this drive. They might want to try to get him down a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, what do they call that? Third level run, first level being the D-line, and linebacker second level in the secondary, the third. When you block it up well and you make the secondary do all the tackling, that will wear on a defense. On second down now. It's Scott, and he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. The Eagles on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and two. Here's Scott. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. And in their own territory, needing only a few inches, they're going to line up to go for this thing on fourth down. Trying to pick it up with Clement. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. So they give it up just on their side of midfield. And, yeah, I mean, a surprising decision there to go for that. Must have a lot of confidence in his defense. Must feel like, hey, we're in great shape here because our defense can hold them. Because they're really outside of field goal range now, right? The opposite team. So if you hold them here, you haven't given up any points. You may give up a punt and you're, you're pinned down a little bit. But must have thought it was an okay spot to go for it and decided to be aggressive. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. Here's Hyde on the draw. Three yards on the pick up there, but they've only got it back to third and ten. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. There's Wilson to throw. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Brandy, never quite sure what the side judge or the field judge is going to rule there. That was awfully close, but in the end, he says it passed over the one-yard line, and that's where they're going to mark it out. I mean, you can see it right there, right? See him walking up the sideline? Told him to stop right there at the one. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. But he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they will make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Wins. 
And he'll hit Jeffrey complete. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he'll punt it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Returnable for Lockett. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive. The Seahawks offense. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead then. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion. Put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's Wilson. He finds his man, the tight end Olson. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Wilson now, 12 of 16 thus far. It's first and 10. Wilson. This complete to lock it. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. My next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage. Knew him, and he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Russell Wilson with two first-half touchdown passes. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it. That can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. This one taken from the seven. Let's go, baby. Let's go. So we reach half. And now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They built a good first half lead, now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spend the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half nice first half that we've had guys but be prepared for some change-ups we're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half see how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively and that'll be accepted of course and that moves them back five and that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here second down and long they run again with Carson he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, Wilson. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. So no problems moving the ball in the first half, but they'll likely come up empty here on drive one of quarter three. And it was so important for the defense to get that stop because what we witnessed in the first half, 
was them getting run right over. And they needed the confidence, and they needed to get off the field, so they felt good going forward in this game. Went to the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 20. Here's Wentz to throw. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. On second down, Clement. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. Only a yard on the gain there, and that'll set up third and 13. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Alshon Jeffrey, 20. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Alshon Jeffrey, 83 yards. And the Eagles make some inroads here on that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency yet relaxed enough to get it done. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. This will be taken very short. They're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game is starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Back to the ground. This time it's high. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays. But stick pressure comes and Wilson's going to go down. Fletcher Cox, what a season he continues to have. His 15th sack of the campaign. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. I absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air, and that allows the punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. In on the tackle there, Bobby Wagner coming off a third straight all-pro season. To throw on second and six, Wentz. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Vincent Mayola showing his strength and quickness there. A loss of four. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And Jeffrey's got it. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A very well executed play. It goes for 29 yards. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Shotgun now for Wentz. Going to go to Clement here out of the backfield. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. They nowhere to escape, and he goes down. A 
tough couple of weeks for the man under center. Five sacks last week, four now this week. Do you try to design some quicker developing plays if you're an offensive coordinator? I think you do that. I think you also change his launch point at times. In other words, move your pocket to the right, to the left, roll him out, bootleg it. Do some different things so they can't just rely on the fact that he's going to take three to five steps back in the pocket and line up and throw the football. Yeah, current formula is not working right now. This pass complete wins to Ertz. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Wentz now to throw. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by Quadre Diggs. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. So now he's equaled his interception total from a week ago. Remember, Charles, he had three last week. And you know, all week long, he vowed to take that number down. Told the guys on the team, don't worry, things are going to pick up. I got this. But he is in a major league rut right now. Let's see if his teammates can pick him up along the way. You're right. He talks about being cool, calm, collective, rebounding. Not rebounding right here. On second and 11 now. Wilson, it's caught, lock it, and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They get 17 on that one, move the chains, first down Seahawks. Now Wilson on first down, that's complete to Disley, the tight end. A gain of six there on first. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. He was unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Wilson's throw caught by Metcalf. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Making a hat trick for Russell Wilson. Three touchdown passes now. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. So that's the rookie's first trip to the end zone, and I think it's safe to say one he'll always remember. Oh, without a doubt, that one is going to be imprinted forever. And nowadays, we're seeing rookies make a greater impact at that position at receiver than ever before. I think mainly because of the sheer volume of footballs that they catch in college. How does the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away? This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit, because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line, throwing his wins. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go for the 40. They run out of the gun with Clement. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get it behind the line. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. Now Wentz on third down. And that will be incomplete. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter. As he'll go for it on fourth down. He's going to rifle. That's caught inside the 20. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. J.J. Arzega Whiteside with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Eagles get a score closer. That certainly went against the traditional ways of playing football, but who cares? Look at the result. Big touchdown. They went for it on their own side of the 50. 
So there's conservative, there's aggressive, and there's really aggressive, which is what we just saw there. Tip of the cap to them. So that drive spanned five plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. The third quarter has not been kind to them after they built that lead at intermission. They've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now? Those extra plays or plays they have to run that will be effective and get them back moving again. They'll be looking for something here, anything to seize that momentum back. It looks like a pickup of six. That leaves them with seven yards to go on third down. On third down, Wilson. Complete here. It's high. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. On second and seven, Wilson, he finds Dorsett, it's complete. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 28. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfect down the numbers. There he goes. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Chris Carson, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical is one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain the clock, too, with yeah. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. That's tremendous lows for him, doesn't it? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. They can't stop Bruce Irvin there as he slips in for the sack. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Working from the gun, Wentz. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. So they'll trudge off the field with a bitter taste in their mouths after that failed fourth down conversion. Yeah, there'll be a lot of analysis there on the sidelines. Was it the right call? Was it, the, was it against the right defense? Should they have even gone for it at all? Will that change what they do going forward in this game? A lot of... And he will score! Touchdown Seattle! Chris Carson with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Extra point up and through by Myers. 
And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper. Into the end zone for the touchdown. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. How many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. To throw his wins. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. On second down now, it's Carson. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. The Seahawks on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This will be third and six. And caught left side, Olsen. That'll pick up the first down for Seattle on a gain of 18. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way and worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Smith, they'll lock it with a grab over the middle, and he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Carson, and for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made that time by Brandon Graham. They stay on the ground again. It's Carson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to make it third down and 10. On third down, Carson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Fourth down now after a loss of two. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they get a little bit of a win there, but let's face it. The vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And following the interception, just any interception. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Bobby Wagner, the former second rounder out of Utah State with a sack. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. It's Goodwin, and this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. The reception good for seven. It's third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just let them bleed the game out. 
And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Wentz can pull it down when he needs to, and the 6'5 quarterback picks up the first down. They'll run on first down. It's Scott, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Wentz on the draw leaves it for Sanders, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case. That play got fouled up. On second down, it's Scott. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. You got it. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. From the gun on third down, wins. And an alley to run. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 14. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, wins. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Jaron Reed in there to drop him, and that is the seventh time tonight that he has gone down. Now a play fake. Wentz. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Trey Flowers picks it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Carson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. And now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. Carson Wentz and the Eagles getting set to take over. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had a victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Throwing on second and three. Wentz. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. On third down, Scott. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. Now Scott. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now they'll throw it. Wins. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The linebacker, Bobby Wagner, able to get back in coverage and knock it free. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. From the gun, it's Wentz. 
He's going to rifle one deep left side. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Quadre Diggs. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now. That's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as if they can't even believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game? Well, they said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. You're calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They'll keep it on the ground. Carson, and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On third down, it's Carson, and he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. This is fielded at the 27. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for Pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. And someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, I probably just want to put this one behind them. Now a desperation throw deep. And this is caught. 39 yards there. A big one. Let's go. But defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. Second down and goal. Wentz. This is taken in by Jeffrey. He's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Sean Jeffrey with his 13th touchdown of the year and second of the game. And the Eagles make some inroads here on that deficit. And he will get into the end zone to shave two more points off the deficit. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. This one taken from the seven. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101.